Welcome back to Start Your Day. Our next guest is a biracial black woman who is uh, shaking up the publishing industry by raising the volume on voices that matter. Rebecca Baruki believes traditional publishing is overwhelmingly white. So she co-founded her own publishing company called Row House. Uh, she did it to remove the obstacles presented to marginalized authors. You see it right there. And Rebecca, so nice to join us from Trenton, New Jersey now to share her story of inspiration. Good morning to you. Thank you for starting your day with us. We appreciate you. Good morning. Thank you, Thank you so much for having me. Good morning. Uh, of course, culture, John. That, oh, that's a Philadelphia thing right there. I like that. <laughs> um, Philly, we'll right? talk about Very that if we have job. some time. I uh, like that John. Everybody knows what a John is. It could be a person, place, a thing. Uh, let's talk about those, some of those obstacles to uh, marginalized authors. W what are some of those obstacles that marginalized authors face when uh, going into a white publishing house? I mean, first and foremost, the white leadership just isn't interested in the stories, um, definitely not invested mm. in the stories, so they're not showing up with the funds. The advances are very low in comparison into, you know, comparison to white authors, and also they're not helping with marketing or promotion. So even if you are, you know, able to score a book deal as a black or brown person, you're not going to get the support from your publisher that's required to make the book a success. So we're changing that with our model, and we're really excited about it. So yeah, you, so you figured this out. I, I believe with your with your own journey, you you tried. You had your own book that you wanted to get published. Uh, you took it into a, a white publishing house, and what happened when you tried to present your book proposal? I actually had two pub or two books published with a major house. Um, so, and they were very successful and they supported me very well, but, you know, yeah. as you can see, I'm someone that, uh, can be, you know, described as ambiguous. I navigate white spaces very well. And, you know, it was mm. exciting for them to have someone so palatable that they were able to promote. But when I brought a story, um, my children's book that's behind you, uh, to the publishing house, they weren't as interested. And, you know, it could be because there was a brown girl on the cover. It could be for a lot of reasons, but they turned it away even after two of my books had already been successes. So I went on to self-publish it, uh, became a huge success. They wanted it back. Um, but, you know, at that point, I was seeing so many other structural issues inside the company that I, I was uh, compelled to leave. That is, that's interesting. So because, you know, you are biracial and you know, some people can yeah. say, well, she could pass or whatever. Uh, th mm -hmm. That's interesting. They treated you one way based on your face, but based on the story, uh, based on what you presented to them, the stories that you did present to them, they, they, they treated you differently. Well, you know, it was in a conference in May 2018, I walked in and again, like I'm looking around because, you know, as a brown person, you're looking for the other brown people in the room. And I uh, quickly saw that I was the brownest person in the room, which is problematic, you know, looking at mm. me. And when I asked the CEO why that was, his answer, verbatim was, well, you need to understand, Rebecca, that we cater to an affluent audience. You know, and that's not so thinly veiled uh, code for we cater to an affluent wow. white audience. And yeah, yeah, he said that on the microphone. So, you know, what was obvious to me, wow. obviously wasn't so obvious to him. And, um, you know, just another, another signal that, you know, not only did I not belong there, but certainly not my community. I, I don't know if you want to tell us what publishing company that was, but uh, we would oh, love to hear if you want to go ahead and reveal. <laughs> we keep it real here. Okay. All right. Yeah. 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 Please yeah. keep it real. That's so we we we, yeah. we know not to uh, support somebody like that. All right. So your company created the uh, uh, the forty forty model that promotes equity and pay. Uh, so how, yes. how does that work? To break that down for us. So excited about the 4040 model. It is uh, inspired by the 40 acres and a mule that were promised to black Americans. And then that mm. promise was taken back. So it's a $40,000 advance and a 40% royalty share, which is four times industry average. And that goes to every single one of our authors, regardless of the size of their platforms. We really want to invest in them and we want to be partners with them in making their books a success. How are you able to do that and, and other companies won't do it? What, what is that about? Well, that's the key, right? It's won't. It's not can. Mm -hmm. So when we looked at the numbers and we had right. the COO 
CFO of Simon & Schuster, Dennis Ulau, who was really an angel that came in to help us with this, with this model and make sure that it was a viable model. And we've also had some incredible uh, finance experts come in. Uh, you know, Pierre Laveau from Seat at the Table, a black and brown funded and founded a crowd equity funding company came in and partnered with us to raise the funds. We got 1.1 million in less than 10 months with over 1,100 investors and donors that, that came in to support. So, you know, we figured very quickly by looking at the numbers that we could be profitable in the first year. And it is exactly because the other companies won't. It is not because they can't. I love that. And, and you raised a million dollars in 10 months through cro uh, crowdfunding. That's great. Uh, self started one wonderful million. doing that. One, one, well, I'm sorry, don't, uh, don't forget the 100,000. 1.1 1 .1 million, just make that happen as well. Uh, so what advice would you give aspiring uh, authors of color uh, trying to mm -hmm. launch a book? Because a lot of people don't feel like they have a story to tell. And I always tell them, like, you got a story to tell. Everybody's got a story to tell. So what advice would you give to uh, somebody that's thinking about writing a book? I mean, I know it's hard to share something that's so personal and so valuable to you, especially when intellectual property, you know, theft is happening all around us, especially to black and brown people, especially to black women. But I would say share your story. Tell everybody you know that you want to write a book. What's so beautiful about our culture and our community is that we really lift each other up and we, you know, we cheer each other on and share in each other's success. So talk about it, talk about it, talk about it, and definitely tell people that you want to write a book. We have been tagged in so many posts on social media already when people are talking about writing the books, and we want to see those proposals. They're already coming to my desk, and because we don't require our authors to be agented, you don't need an agent to submit a proposal to us, it's very mm. likely that I'm going to be and, and write what's on your heart as well. I wrote a book. Uh, my book came out two years ago now. Uh, it was my memoir. And my wife, my background is sports. And I remember my agent telling me at the time, white agent, uh, telling me at the time, and some publishing companies telling me because my background is sports being at ESPN and Fox, oh, you should write a sports book. Uh, nobody wants to hear mm -hmm. about your memoir. Nobody wants to hear about your story or whatever. So that was really discouraging. And that's why I took my book. Uh, to a black owned publishing company because uh, they encouraged me to write my story and that was really important exactly. to me. Exactly. And that's, yeah. and that's the key. Uh, so, you need to so go to what, people who are invested. Absolutely. So, so what's the future for your company? And if somebody wants to submit a book how, uh, uh, to you, how, how can they do that? Our submissions are open. You go to rowhousepublishing.com slash submissions and you can get all the guidelines there. The future is that we're going to grow. We're going to compete. We are very, very excited about challenging the rest of the industry to meet us and maybe better our deals so that we have to rise to the challenge. All right, let's do that. Let's go ahead and support these uh, black owned businesses, black owned publishing companies, and she paying y'all folks 40, 40. <laughs> hey, come on, man. That's a good yes, deal. She paying you get them royalties. I know, man, I, I, my next book might be with you. Rebecca Baruki, uh, thank you for starting your day with us. We appreciate you.